In a video we created a while back, we showed you how easy it is to pollinate orchids. We have had great feedback on our tutorial, and we are so excited to release a follow-up to this video. Today we are going to show you how to flask your mature orchid seed. We will start with some background information on why orchid seeds need special medium to grow and why. But if you'd like to skip to the juicy information, you can use these timestamps as a guide. As always, if you like what you see and hear in this video, make sure you download our ebook to keep all this information on hand. Orchid seeds are different to other species in that they lack an endosperm, a food storage which nourishes young seedlings before they can photosynthesize themselves. In nature, orchids have developed a symbiotic relationship with fungi which nourish the young orchids. So when we want to grow our own orchid seed, we need to sow them into a jelly-like medium full of sugars, vitamins and minerals perfectly tailored to the needs of the orchid. Unfortunately, this environment is also loved by unwanted bacteria and fungi. This means the grower needs to work as sterile as possible when sowing their seeds. To do this, media needs to be autoclaved and a sterile room helps eliminate airborne pathogens. We were lucky enough to make use of a professional tissue culture laboratory, equipped with autoclades and laminar flow cabinets but we will try offer at home alternatives for all the hobbyists out there. Let's get started with how we made our growing medium. We followed the recipe to make up one liter of Nudson's orchid media. A glass beaker was placed on a magnetic stirrer and 500 milliliters of distilled water was added. If you are doing this at home, you can mix this medium on the stove or wall in the microwave. Just make sure all your equipment is clean. As we mentioned, we are making up a solution of Nudson's orchid media. A sachet of Nudson's vitamins and minerals was added to the distilled water. These and other stock solutions are available from specialist suppliers. We will link ours in the description. Our recipe also needed to be made up of 2% sucrose and 15% coconut water. For 1 litre of medium, this translated to 20 grams of sucrose and 150 milliliters of coconut water. At home, substitute the sucrose for sugar. Both additions help supplement the endospermous orchid seed with carbohydrates. To finish the stock solution, the beaker was filled up to the 1 litre mark with distilled water. The benefit of making solutions like this and pouring them into glass beakers is you have easy access to pre-made stock. Remember to label your stock solutions and keep them in the fridge if required. Because we didn't need to use all our stock solution, half was poured back into a glass beaker on the magnetic stirrer. 1.5 grams of activated charcoal was added. You can find this at specialist retailers and some pharmacies. Charcoal is added to the medium to soak up any toxins that might harm the young seedlings. Next we have to test the pH. This is tricky to do at home, but is mostly required to make sure the medium can solidify properly. So don't worry too much if you can't complete this step. We had to lower the pH of our medium to around 5.3 with a few drops of hydrochloric acid. The final addition to our medium was 5 grams of gelrite, the substance which will help the medium solidify. Agar can also be used. You can either purchase these compounds from specialist retailers, or try use gelatin in their place. A tin foil lid was placed on the beaker to prevent evaporation and the solution was left to stir and heat up for 40 minutes to make sure everything was well dissolved and mixed. To make the pouring process easier, we transferred our hot, liquid solution to a glass bottle with a media dispenser attachment. With each pump, the dispenser releases 10 milliliters of solution. We pumped our solution into heat-stable plastic pots. Glass honey pots are a great alternative for home use. Each pot should contain between 30 to 50 milliliters of medium.
The pots were sealed with their lids and readied for autoclaving. Other equipment like scalpels, tweezers, jars of distilled water, and jars of bleach were also placed into the autoclave baskets if you need to sterilize your medium at home. Pressure cookers can be a viable option. Just make sure you use the old-fashioned, manual cookers and not the modern computerized versions. These newer pressure cookers do not reach the temperature and pressure required to kill all the pesky spores and pathogens in your media and on your equipment. We sterilized ours for 30 minutes at pressure. Once your medium is sterilized, leave them to cool and solidify. You can make up the media days, weeks and even months in advance and keep them in the fridge for future use. Now that we have got our media ready, let's get started with the seed sowing, or as some specialists call it, flasking. Here is a mature Phalaenopsis pod ready for harvest. We will link our video on orchid pollination in the description. To harvest the pods, we sprayed our scissors and the orchid with ethanol and gently cut off the tip of the stem. We then removed any excess stem and remaining flower petals. For the rest of the video we will be flasking Cymbidium seed as an example. The rest of this process took place in a laminar flow room. A laminar flow hood exerts sterile air outwards making sure no airborne pathogens find their way into your flasks. At home, make sure you are in a clean, dust-free room and try protect your work with coverings like plastic boxes for you to work under. Step 1 of seed flasking requires you to sterilize your seed pod. We placed our pod in a solution of 20% jick and distilled water, which was autoclaved along with the growing medium. A few drops of dishwashing liquid were added. The pod stayed in this solution for 30 minutes and was regularly shaked. In this video we are going to show you two methods of green pod flasking, using dry seed and wet seed. For both methods, start by removing your pod and slicing it in half using sterile tweezers and scalpels. You can see here all the fluffy, white seeds in the inside of the pod. Because we cut this pod open in a sterile environment, all these seeds should be sterile too. To flask dry seed, simply scrape out some of the seed over your solidified medium, trying to spread out the seed as evenly as possible. Before you cut open your seed, you can spray it with ethanol and set it alight for a few seconds but we found it unnecessary in this case. Dry seed flasking is a bit less finicky than the next method and great for beginner orchid flaskers. However, you do risk overcrowding your seed, which means your young seedlings will need to be transplanted and divided much sooner.
To wet floss, the seed was dusted into jars of distilled autoclave water. We use two jars to prevent contamination. In this case, if one jar gets contaminated at least the seed in the other jar will still be sterile. Using new, sterile syringes the seeds were sucked up and dropped onto the solidified medium. As you can see, this helps to disperse the seed more evenly over the medium and will allow them to grow bigger while still in this same petri dish. We wrapped all our jars, petri dishes and pots with cling film and kept them under UV lights. With Cymbidians, germination should begin in about 3 weeks or so. And that brings us to the end of our video on flasking orchid seed. We hope you enjoyed. Keep an eye out for a growing update and reflasking video. Remember your ebook before you go and we will see you in the next video.